let's go ahead and get into our rapid fire questions. For those who are new to the show, James will have 30 seconds to answer five questions. If he answers all five questions in 30 seconds, he will get a bonus six question unrelated to cybersecurity. James, are you ready for the rapid fire round? Yes. Your time will start as soon as I stop asking the first question. Here we go. What is the most critical security vulnerability today? Misconfigurations. Favorite hacker movie, show, or game? Hacker Jeopardy at uh, security conferences. Favorite hacking tool? Something I create on my own. Best hacker alive today? I don't know their name. <laughs> Multiple certifications or a degree, which is more valuable to a cybersecurity career today? I would say, what was the question again? Multiple, multiple certifications or a degree, what is more valuable to a cybersecurity career today? Both. All right, so that was over 30 seconds, so we're not going to do the bonus question. But oh, man. Have, don't don't worry about it. I mean, not that many people will get the bonus question. It is hard. You have to answer that. The fourth question, best soccer alive today, That was uh, that's a tricky one. And uh, I don't know what I would say for that one either. But I do like your response to that one where you said, I don't know. And that's, that's honestly the answer. It's like the best one is the ones we don't know because mm-hmm. <laughs> they got away with it. Mm-hmm. They do every day. So I think what I want to dive into is so you said your favorite hacking tool was the one you create yourself. And I want to know what is your process when it comes to creating hacker tools? Do you create hacker tools because a tool doesn't exist like in a, in a capacity that you want it to work? Or like what is really the thought process and like why you would create a tool? And then how do you go about creating a tool? Like what are you, what are you trying to do? Well, essentially, there are thousands and thousands of tools. Essentially, they exist uh, and add over time because the capability wasn't there previously or it wasn't good enough to provide what they needed or there's something, a better way to do it. I would say the best tool is is when you're in a situation when you can't find the right tool and you have to create the capability you need to, to, provide, to get the resources that you want. Uh, and I would say right tool at the right time, you know, that's all it takes. With the right mindset, so of course. What do you write your tools in? Do you use like Bash scripts, Python scripts, all of the above, some other languages? Like, what's your go-to languages for those? Uh, I started writing my own uh, tools in uh, a long time ago, '96. Uh, so, uh, Batch uh, initially in, in DOS uh, in Windows '95. Eventually, I found and fell in love with Linux, and then I started using Bash. And I know Python is there and got a little bit of scripting with that, but mainly I stick with Bash just because uh, it can be easily uh, put together um, and troubleshooted because, uh, you know, it takes a couple times to get it right. And uh, I just feel like that's the easiest way to go. And while you were talking about that and talking about programming, I thought about something that I haven't asked on the podcast before. So you're going to have the luxury of being the first one to get this question. Uh, it just popped in my mind. I wasn't planning on asking this today, but uh, programming. How important is it for someone to know programming in cybersecurity and hacking? How critical is it? I would say at a junior level, it's really not. But I would say when you start working up to a mid or more advanced level, then it's essential. Just because from, from what I understand so far, there's a lot of junior jobs where they want you to do source code review. Uh, you need to understand how it's put together, what it does, what's the purpose, and, and how it operates. And if you don't have the development mindset, it's going to be very difficult to do that. The, the best way to understand something is to, you know, use it to create something. So if you don't know how to understand how to, to hack web applications, the best uh, way to start is to build a foundation of, of creating and developing um, a website. Uh, and then you can start picking apart and understanding how it's configured and the mechanisms and all that good stuff. But uh, with uh, development, I'd say that uh, eventually you're going to reach a point in time where uh, you're going to go from just using tools to get a result to you're going to develop to where you're going to have to start asking strategic questions. What am I looking for? What are the things I'm looking for? What is it? 
what is it doing? Then you're going to say, okay, what tools do I need to answer that question? And sometimes you're not going to have a tool or it, it may not work perfect. And sometimes it's just easier to create your capability uh, to provide you know, the answer to your questions. And if someone wanted to learn how to program and, and script, what do you recommend as like places to learn those skills? Uh, well, I know Google has a couple resources. Uh, TCM Security has some good resources. Zero Point Security has some good resources for like like Zero Point Security has like a, a Rust uh, course. I think it's pretty great. Uh, I know that uh, uh, colleges usually have programming courses, but um, but for more for the free stuff, there's just uh, you pretty much just go to Google and uh, type in free resources for this, and you're gonna find several. That's just a good place to start. Good to know. So I'm going to rewind and go back to your background a little bit. So I want to know, how has your digital forensic experience contributed to your current work as a penetration tester? I would say for doing, trying to, you know, being new to digital forensics and really understanding the purpose and what you're, what you're looking at, you're looking at uh, a deep dive into Windows operating systems, cellular devices and and how they operate. Uh, And then you're, you're making a bit, for bit copy of that device and you're you're making an image of it and you're running tools against it and you're analyzing it and things like that. So my thought process coming from you know the hacker's view is how can I use forensics to make me better as a hacker? Uh, can I understand the system better? Can I can I understand where things are stored better? Could you know, things like that. So uh, I would say my thought process is now I maybe have a better understanding a more focused or strategic outlook on where I'm going to target. Like, for example, if I wanted to uh, pull, uh, use volatility, for example, to, to pull, uh, do a memory analysis. Maybe I want to look for passwords. Uh, maybe I want to see uh, deleted files from the recycle bin. Maybe there's passwords, you know, uh, just that thought process, you know, what's out there that I can't see right now that I, from a hacker's view, I'm like, I want that information. I want to know what's there. Can I use that information to get me further in the system? Yeah, that's a really good point you mentioned. I, I probably need to take a digital forensics course so I can better understand that. I was actually recently doing a Hack the Box uh, live stream, which was yesterday, the time of this recording. And I had like, there was like a backup file of the system and there was, I had to mount it and I had spent so much time like trying to figure out how to mount this thing. And like, if I just knew how to mount it and like dig into the files, I could get the what the information I needed to progress in, in that CTF challenge. And yeah, there's the, I think digital friends helps a lot, you know, when it comes to that kind of stuff. And I really do like those hack the box and the CTF styles that like forces you to go in those digital forensics because uh, it, I think it is a critical skill for pen testers to understand. If you enjoyed this clip from the Hackers Cash podcast, do me a favor and hit the like button and subscribe for more hacking and cybersecurity content. And if you want to watch the full episode, you can get that by clicking here. Or if you want to watch the best video for you according to the YouTube algorithm, you can get that right here. See you in the next video.